Brandon Benefield, Gerard Bonner, and Diana Michelle. What's going on, everybody? It's that time of the week. It's Friday. You know what that means. It's time for your favorite podcast, the SHW Podcast. This is our wrestling be double Brandon Benefield, the great GB Gerard Bonner, and the beautiful Diana Michelle. We are back at our normal time, our regularly scheduled program. Uh, it's it's been a minute since we've had all three of us just at a regular uh, schedule here, but we're back and um, in between two major shows. So last week, coming off of the huge benefit show where it was SHW versus TCW, mm -hmm. uh, it was fight for the children, and then of course next Friday. We've got the huge SHW 68. It's already here. These back-to-back -back seemingly shows. I mean, yeah, there's a, a week in between, but we're used to once a month, and then all of a sudden we get like right. three in the span of a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a little hectic and crazy. So we're going to try to recap last week and do a quick preview for next week. But before we get to it, you guys, it's so lovely to see all of you. How are you guys doing? I'm better. Yeah. Which is great. I have a voice. I can actually uh, get out there just a little bit. We did do the podcast last week. Uh, yep. wasn't quite as rough as the weekend, but uh, yeah, if you guys missed it, we we did run that on Friday morning. So yeah. go back and watch it if you missed it, because mm -hmm. uh, we did a what a preview of the Fight for Children show and mm -hmm. some other stuff. So yeah, but yeah, we're all good here. We're getting there on the mend. Uh, next <laughs> week should be. 100%. All right. Yeah. I think last week I talked about how we are often running all mm -hmm. over the place. <laughs> and because we're running all over the place, uh, it catches up with us. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, one of the challenges of the wrestling world is I think everyone believes we are all superhuman. And because we are all superhuman and we show up in your towns and we do all that we do, it's just like, well, of course they're okay. But, you know, our voices do what they do, and if we don't get enough rest or if time wears us out, you know, we get impacted by it. So I think we all in some way have been impacted in the last week or so, but uh, we're all on the mend and we're we're doing well. I had a birthday, and so that yes. was a lot of fun. So uh, I just want to say thank you. I think so many people um, were so kind on my birthday and said so many really nice things. And so I just want to make sure I say thank you to everyone. Um, this the warranted. I must go ahead and tell you, I didn't have a chance to say a whole lot because I was not feeling well, but Understood. you know, I love you. I you do. know how I feel about you and everything that was said was exactly the truth and wanted and deserved. Thank you. It, it means yep. a lot. And so <laughs> yeah. I am, um, <laughs> I am uh, I am very, very grateful um, for everybody, fans, wrestlers, everybody who said so many very, very kind things. And so I am appreciative. And it is my yearly reminder to always find nice things to say about people at unscheduled times. Like, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. I love it on my birthday. And it was overwhelming. It really, really was. Um, and I realized that kind of joy needs to be spread all year long. So if you have people in your life that you value, that you love, you don't have to wait until their birthday or Christmas or whatever other holiday or special occasion. Tell them something nice now. They probably need it more than you realize. So thank you all very, very much. It was a week of very big news. We might tap on some of it that impacts those of us that you see on this screen. So, uh, yeah, a lot of things going on around these parts, including all things Southern Honor. So thank yeah. you all again. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, there you go. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, to touch on what you said a second ago, GB, yes, even Wonder Woman needs a night off. And uh, Even Wonder Woman. I, I got to give a huge shout out. We got to give a huge shout out yes. to our uh, the former signed girl. Now she's our backstage mm -hmm. correspondent. I'm yes. talking about Cheyenne Michaels, who really came in big uh, the other night and uh, mm. filled in not only uh, during the ring announcing during the show, but also on the pre-show. Yeah. Uh, she was able to jump over and uh, almost at the beginning like a deer in headlights, but then like i was like it's cool you we're just just relax yeah. you know it's us yeah. we're all buddies just we're just yeah. chatting just yeah. chatting about the show and then once she got into it totally fine such a professional and yeah. uh she handled it uh very very well and uh, but did not once did she be like no 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 i can't do that she jumped in yeah. first and she was ready to go she might have been a little nervous but 
she handled it and she did it well. So yeah. I'm proud of her. Yay. Yeah. She crushed My it. Girl. And uh, yeah, but let's go ahead and get into it. So it was, like I said, SHW versus TCW. It was fight <clears throat> for the children benefits show uh, the all the proceeds were going to the Cherokee shrine club and the Shriners uh, children's hospital. Mm -hmm. And it was, very unique and cool for us because not only are we the voices of Southern Honor Wrestling, we're also the voices of Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling. Mm -hmm. So I found myself really having to reel it in and not, you know, be biased one way or the other. Uh, however, when certain people get into the ring, much like and and not the other night, but if it were like an exotic youth or something like that, it'd be a little hard to remain, you know, unbiased. Uh, and that happened a couple times the other night because. Hunter James was especially Hunter James. I mean, Alexander Lev was being Ugh. a you know what. I mean, it was just kind of a. I had to really bite my tongue and kind of like, okay, I got to toe the line here. No, no, and not be well. Be, and the other thing too was, uh, it's been. I think I was telling you guys just off air before we started recording, about five years since I've gone solo at the commentary booth, mm -hmm. and it's a whole different dynamic. And GB, you you know this. It's mm -hmm. just a whole different dynamic when you don't have. Uh, your commentary partner there to bounce yeah. off of. So it was a little interesting. I was not aware uh, that I would be solo for a couple of matches and it was fine. It, it wasn't too long. Uh, and a big shout out and a tip of the cap to Sal Renaro, our pal Sal. Uh, want, he just wandered in. I didn't even know he was there. Wow. I think it was like match two As or he three. Does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two or three or something. He just comes wandering in. Uh, it might have been towards the end of one of the matches. I can't even remember. I'll have to go back and watch once it hits IWTV. But all of a sudden I look over and I'm like, Oh, well, there's uh, Sal Renaro joining me mm -hmm. at the table. So what's this all about? And uh, he just wandered in and he's going, where are we? Are we, we're <laughs> fighting children? What is this? What's happening? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm having to explain. No, here's where we are. Here's what wow. we're doing. And uh, that was, uh, it was interesting to say the least, but it was also a lot of fun. So uh, GB, you were missed sorely, but it was also a interesting yeah. experience to have Sal Renaro uh, join me in the booth. So uh it was I quite a night. I can yeah. only imagine. I can only imagine. So let's get into it. And of course, like I said, it's TCW guys versus SHW guys. There is some crossover because uh, some folks on our roster wrestle for TCW. Some folks from mm -hmm. TCW tend to wrestle for uh, Southern Honor from time to time. So mm -hmm. uh, in this case, we have seen Brady Booker at SHW uh, in the past, but most of his work this year, Diana, you and I have been on that uh, TCW relaunch tour, which has gone on all summer and now going into the fall. Uh, we've seen Brady Booker quite a bit, and yes. uh, he's a huge standout at the TCW shows. Um, mm -hmm. Just uh, you talk about getting the crowd hype, getting the crowd excited. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just a ball of energy. Uh, he's got the look. He's got the build. Uh, and he's got the talent. He's got everything that makes a superstar. And uh Potentially the next big thing in this business. We'll see. Yeah. But on the other side of the coin in this opening matchup, same thing could be said about this guy, Hollywood Hunter James. Uh, a lot of his work has been done at Southern Honor this year, among mm -hmm. other places. And so he was rep representing SHW, Brady Booker representing TCW. Mm -hmm. um, the My favorite thing, I think, was when Hunter James first came out. He was getting uh, mad at not only because Diana was at the show, uh, but Cheyenne was actually calling doing the ring announcing. Mm -hmm. And so Hunter James getting into it with both of you guys already mad at you guys for hyping up the crowd. He didn't want the crowd to be hyped up. And I thought to myself, boy, is he in for it when Brady Booker makes his way out oh, here yes. because you talk about hyping up the crowd. Oh yes. yeah. The roof's about to come off. I mean, Diana, what was your thoughts for this whole opening matchup? Oh my gosh. Well, he, I don't know. He, he was, jarring at me because Cheyenne was was doing the announcing for tonight and I was ringside you know kind of you know pumping everything up and he was like yeah you're out you're out and I'm just like all right Dave don't start your jump I ain't got time for it I don't I don't even have a voice to even say anything but I would swing so hard right now but he was like trying to get in my face and being all whatever being all hunter I did not see Tristan but he was being plenty of a uh, by himself mm -hmm. um he wanted he wanted a shot at Kyle. He wanted he said he was not going anywhere until Kyle came out and gave him another shot at his Jake the Snake Legacy title. He sat in the middle of the ring with his little crisscross applesauce, being a little punk. He didn't get what he wanted. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. But then Brady comes out. You know, Brady, if Brady is the guy that you would want on your show, if you know there's going to be like a dead spot somewhere in the lineup, 
he's going to come out and he's going to erase that dead spot. He's going to hype the crowd all over again because he is mm-hmm. nothing but a big ball of energy. He makes me tired watching him, <laughs> but it's so much fun because he's just 100 miles an hour. I don't know how he breathes. I don't mm-hmm. know how he breathes. He's just 100 miles an hour the whole time. And the match itself, I think it caught Hunter by surprise a lot. He, he didn't really know how to take Brady. Um, the outcome was great. <laughs> right. um, I mean, <laughs> so the we end were, of the match was great. I was we were, trying to get Hunter out of there. And he was just being a punk. And- we were in SHW's house, right? Yes. So SHW, you would think throughout the whole show, would have that home field advantage, that home crowd advantage. However, the crowd kind of surprised me. It's whoever can some, get you, yeah. Right. For some mm-hmm. of these matches, like I said, it was – Hunter repping SHW, Brady repping TCW, <laughs> but the crowd firmly behind Brady Booker. And, uh, mm-hmm. of course, he's everybody's favorite big Brody. Yeah. And I was just thinking back. You were talking about just how good he is at all these different shows we've seen him on. And there was a show we did. I can't remember the town we were in, but it was for Hispanic Heritage Month. And Mm -hmm. so we had like Barry Morales was on the show. We had Quattro Cabezas was on the show and Mm -hmm. some other uh, really great Hispanic talent that were on that show that night. And uh, Brady Booker was on the show and he had a match earlier in the card as Brady Booker. And then later in the card under a luchador mask, he was El Brody. (laughs) And so, (laughs) and the crowd loved it there. Like it was so funny. And uh, because he was still, it was just Brady Booker, but under a a luchador mask. And so uh, it was very funny, but uh it was a it was a great way to open the show and and like you said, uh, Tristan Michaels, the guiding light, was not in attendance that night, and so um, you know I don't know if Hunter was just really counting on uh, on on Tristan Michaels to be there and he wasn't. Um, Andy had his mind. We wondered going into the night, where's his mindset going to be coming off of that big JTS loss uh, at Still Here Six, and uh, yeah, he sat there in the middle of the ring to start the show, and I said, well, he's going to be sitting here a long time because I'm pretty sure Kyle's not going to come out right now. Uh, Kyle had a match later in the show, and we'll get to that. But um, GB, you you've seen both of these guys in action. What's your take mm-hmm. on on either or both? You know, I think both of them represent the future of our business in yeah. great great ways. Okay. You know, you've got Brady Booker, who is this ball of energy. He's electric. The people love him. Um, a magnetic presence. And you know, we we have had the privilege in Southern Honor of seeing those guys who, when they come through the curtain. They don't have a championship, but they, you might as well call them the people's champion because right. the people love them. You know, I think about Hold My Beer Hansen. I think about Kyle Matthews, who's been in that space. I think about uh, Cody Fluffman, who's been in that space. Those guys who just grab the crowd within a moment's notice. And I think, you know, that's what you've got with a Brady Booker. On the other side, you got a Hunter James right. who is the total antithesis of Brady Booker. The crowd hates him, but he's so good that you can't deny him. You know, those guys are going in two different directions, but it's still heading forward. It's still heading up. And so I think it's an honor that we get to house uh, those amazing talents uh, in the, uh, in the Southern honor building. I think it's Mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And and the same could be said about a lot of these guys on this show because we had a lot of young talent and a lot of these TCW guys well, and Southern Honor guys as well are talent that we've all seen come through the Nightmare Factory. And so we've got to see their early uh, stages all the way through now and then hopefully beyond uh, to bigger things, you know, bigger stages. And it's funny that you say that. This is a, a perfect segue into this, given the connection between the Nightmare Factory, TCW, Southern Honor. Uh, it was announced this week that the Nightmare Factory is getting a very unique distinction from, of all places, the WWE. They will now be known as a WWE ID school, which stands for uh, Independent Development, which means there will be a pathway for those who are interested in ultimately going to the WWE mm-hmm. through what we see at the Nightmare Factory, which is all the more reason why we say 
make sure you're paying attention to what's happening yes. at Southern Honor because it is a strong likelihood that you will see these people on national stages uh, mm -hmm. and on your television screens. And so shout out to the Nightmare Factory um, mm -hmm. and everybody at the Nightmare Factory because yep. it means clearly that uh, the WWE's ID is on them. And um, I think that is absolutely awesome. And so again, Pay attention to these stars that are coming out of the Nightmare Factory that show up on Southern Honor, uh, that show up in TCW and show up in other places. Because as Carly Bravo has proved, they will end up on national spaces and still be at some point your tag team champions. Yeah. Right. And of course, we'll get to them uh, in, in a few minutes as well, because the tag team champs for SHW had a big match. <laughs> that being the infantry. But speaking of night my Nightmare Factory guys, um, and you'll hear me say that a few times throughout this card. But this next match in particular, two Nightmare Factory guys that we're very familiar with, Alexander Lev and mm -hmm. Wrestling's Warden Adrian Ward. Two guys that were formerly faithful running together mm -hmm. in that faithful faction, Lev's faithful, up until still here six. And coming into this matchup, we hear from Alexander Lev, who's very irritated and upset at the Warden and blames the Warden for the fact that Lev's faithful lost the faithful gauntlet match, it's still here six, because the warden wasn't there. He didn't mm. show up. Now, we know the warden had travel issues and he couldn't make it. There were outside things that happened that prevented him from being there. However, Lev didn't look at it that way. He was just upset. He blamed the whole thing on warden. Uh, so they come into the night uh, having this one-on-one -on -one matchup. So they've got the, the bitterness from still here six. Now, take that into account, but then also TCW versus SHW. Well, Lev's spent most of his time this year in SHW, so he's rep representing Southern Honor. Mm -hmm. The Warden, back when we had that relaunch show for TCW, back when was it GB? January, February? February. 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 Mm -hmm. And that was the first big relaunch show for Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling after nearly 20 years. And the Warden wrestled on that show where he became the Nightmare Factory champion that night. Mm -hmm. And so he comes into the show representing TCW. Now, it was a heck of a match. It was interesting to see these guys battle, um, but the Warden would, of course, come out on top, putting TCW up two to nothing after mm -hmm. just two matches. Uh, Diana, what were your thoughts seeing these two guys formerly from the Faithful Faction, Lev's Faithful, now going at it? Well, anytime I see anybody go against the Warden, I have to really watch to see what they're thinking because why? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why would you even call out the warden? Why would you even want to start beef with the warden? I mean, yeah, he couldn't be at Southern Honor for the gauntlet match, but dude, I'm not going to pick a fight with him just because he couldn't show. Sorry. I lost. I lost my whole fateful thing. It's my fault. I'm not going to blame that, but that big guy. Uh, Lev, on the other hand, Seem to have no fear when it comes to that. Either that or he had something else up his sleeve. And I haven't quite figured out what was going on there. But it was it was a good match. Well, I get, like they were really at each other. There was something going on, and we'll get yeah. to it later because it mm -hmm. happened later in the night. Now, GB, I know you weren't there, so we'll clue you in on it when we get there. But okay. uh, but go ahead, Diana. Yeah, I just didn't feel like it was a, a really a vengeful fight. It was what? more of a, let's just come to the ring, you know, the kind of thing. And yeah. What was interesting was the fact that, uh, the, the SHW faithful took the warden like right away. We're used to seeing him as part of Lev's group and them because, just being booed like, out of the Hunter building. James, when you have right. whiny little kids in there, just being children right. and blaming the world for their problems. Nobody wants to be your friend. Yeah. So yeah. Why wouldn't they go for warden? Right. Yeah. It was just interesting, but, but I'm saying, cause this whole year when he's been with Lev, He's been mm -hmm. on the other side of the coin where everybody's booing him out of the building. And so it had to have been a weird feeling for him, I would think, yeah, to all of a sudden be, you know, the fan favorite. It was kind of odd for me on commentary, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, GB. You had any thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it, it says also <clears throat> the power of um, what happens when the crew hates you so much. Like Lev has not in any way endeared himself to the SHW faithful. Mm -hmm. So I think what's interesting in just hearing about this is while on paper it appeared to be Southern Honor versus TCW, in the home of SHW, the fans were just like, who do we like and who don't we like? 
right. doesn't seem like they were keeping score of who's up, TCW or SHW. Right. They were just like, who do we like and who gets on our nerves? And here's the thing, as yeah. much as the SHW faithful loves SHW, they dislike who they dislike. That's and right. uh, clearly Hunter, James, and Lev were not enough for them to go, oh yeah, but it's SHW. Right. Nah, nice. So it was interesting. So while after two matches, SHW was down two to nothing, you know, the crowd, you wouldn't know it by hearing the crowd reaction to those two right. matches. So it was very right. interesting, a very interesting dynamic there. But uh, this next matchup, and this was around the time when uh, Sauer and Aro just wandered into the uh, commentary mm. booth. <coughs> it was Kyle Matthews very first title defense of the Jake, the snake legacy championship. And this and I think a lot of people will agree, the ones that were there that night that saw this match, when it hits IWTV, trust me, you're going to want to watch it. People yes. are calling it the match of the year. And going wow. into the night, we knew it was going to be an instant classic because it was mm -hmm. Kyle Matthews versus QT Marshall. And mm -hmm. man, oh man, did they tear the house down. It, yes, this was did. an incredible matchup. People were saying ahead of time, for fans of real technical wrestling, this is a, mm -hmm. a dream match. Yes. Uh, is a first ever matchup. These guys have never faced before. Kyle's been in the business just over 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, QT, around that same amount of time, he's been down in Georgia for, I think, seven or eight years, mm -hmm. and they had never crossed paths before. So uh, for this matchup to happen was huge, and we were lucky enough to get it to happen uh, at the Action Building, the home of Southern Honor. And, man, oh, man, was this an awesome matchup. I, I don't even know where to start other than you just need to see it when it comes out. But – um, Kyle Matthews finally got SHW on the board. He was able to retain the title in a match that could have gone absolutely either way. And I talked about the crowd being one way or the other in those other two matches. They started out firmly behind Kyle, which we expected they would be. Mm -hmm. However, QT, and when he's been at SHW before, he's gotten a good reaction from the crowd. Uh, but starting out, they were fully, fully behind Kyle. And then as the match went on, it was like, a 50 50 split it was just like or not even that it was like 100 100 it was like the yeah. whole crowd was for both guys almost and so wow. it was just a a cool uh visual and, and cool to be there in that moment and, and to see that matchup but uh diana what'd you think of this match kyle matthews successful in his very first jts title that was match. amazing this was a great match I, i'm i'm ready to watch it back again but yeah. what i love about the southern honor fans or the canton fans because it could have been some tcw guys in there too yeah. Mm -hmm. They love good wrestling. They they respond to good wrestling. I mean, if it's bad, they'll they'll let you know that too. Right. Yeah. But they like good wrestling. And when you give them two guys like Kyle Matthews and QT Marshall in a match like this, they have no other choice but to love it. Because the whole thing, there was there was nothing that I could say negative about this match. It was amazing. Wow. Them two together need to go all over the country wrestling each other to show what what technical wrestling is, what good wrestling is. Because good, we know how good Kyle is, we know how good QT is. But them together, it was just like it was like a melody. It just flowed, and it was it chemistry. Was yeah, yeah, it was beautiful. I loved it. It was it was amazing. So good uh, yeah. and mutual respect for both. Oh, it was just it was great match of the I night. Obviously, yes. I, I will say this. I think just from what you all are saying, this proves is that people really do like good wrestling. Yes. You know, like I know, you know, and we won't get into the weeds on this. People are debating stories, wrestling, blah, blah, blah. All of it's important. Um, at the end of the day, though, I think people have a space for solid wrestling. People do appreciate it. And um, and I love that two veterans got a chance to do that. I love that we're in an era where you still could have two veterans have a battle um, and it can still be a first time and it can be one of those things that you want to see again. You know, so this kind of reminds me of, you know, when you hear of a, a great game and you know how it turned out, but you still need to watch the game to Absolutely. see how we got there. Yes. This is that kind of match. And uh, I can't wait to watch the magic. I, I was thinking the whole time. I was like, I can't wait for GB to watch this one back. I knew, oh, yeah. I I knew you're going to love it. I can't oh, I know. Wait. And oh, uh, you talk about uh, great veterans. Well, we have another great veteran in this next matchup. Very Morales making his return mm. to the action building, this time representing Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, taking on a young up and comer, a young gun, the young gun, Grayson Pierce. And um, I will tell you what, 
it was so refreshing to see Grayson Pierce out from the shadow of Alexander Lev, and he really mm-hmm. got a chance to shine. And you'll hear Sal Renaro on commentary putting this kid over the moon, saying it's about time that this guy gets some shine on his own. He gets yes. this, this spotlight to show what he can do. And I will tell you what, people coming into this match, I think just figured, oh, it's very Morales. He's got this match, no problem. But, man, the young gun gave him a run for his money. And, uh, like I said, Barry uh, representing TCW that night, uh, Grayson representing SHW. And Barry would, of course, come out on top, putting TCW up 3-1. to one. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't for lack of an effort because Grayson Pierce, I mean, he laid it all out there. And he was going toe-to-toe and hanging with Barry Morales, which is not easy to do. And no. one thing that Sal brought up, uh, which was a good point, was – Grayson is not used to being the bigger competitor in his matches. And so that was a a different dynamic for him that took some adjusting, I think. And and he adapted to it very well and was able to uh, hang with Bear Morales. Unfortunately, he didn't get the win. But man, oh, man, it was just it was great. And you could touch on this, Diana, as well, just to see him not just as one of Alexander Lev's lackeys. You know, he was there standing on his own, having his own match and just really getting a chance to shine that night i don't know what the future is with grayson and lev and whatever is going on over there i don't know if there is a future if he's going to continue to be part of whatever lev's got working in over there but again we'll touch on that in a little yeah. bit gb you'll see where we're going yeah but when grayson came out he had a, a different demeanor he looked different he looked more confident he looked like a bird out of a cage he came to the ring just different. I mean, it was just, it didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I couldn't really remember he was with the faithful because this is another guy. This is somebody completely different. Yeah. Um, he had confidence and I, and I appreciate that. Um, being confident against Barry Morales is big. It's huge because we all know how good Barry is. We know, we all know what he can do. We've seen him in different spaces, many places and, and the things that he can do, it doesn't matter. His height doesn't matter. His size doesn't matter. Anything, he can go. He's one of the best I've ever seen, best I've ever known. It was a great match. Grayson did well. I, it, was, it was good to see him, like you said, be himself and and do what he could do and, and work with somebody like Barry and, and and do well. I mean, it was a great yeah. match. It was it was another great match. Um I, I'm, I'm just curious of what what's going to happen later on with Grayson. Is he going to continue being the young gun, or is he going to fall in line? We'll see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 just intrigued to see where this goes <laughs> right now because yes. I'm just like hmm. I was hoping you'd get that. <laughs> it, it'll all make sense a little more sense yes, once we yes. get to after this next matchup. I'm and and I'll, wait. Just go, I'll go ahead and jump into it. So again, yeah. at that point, uh, SHW is down three to one, mm-hmm. and the next matchup was the <clears throat> first title defense for the infantry mm. of the SHW tag team titles. Now, of course, we know they were also the they are also the Nightmare Factory tag champions, and so they come out just draped in gold. Right, all their titles with them. And was that a little Bravo that brought them out? Who was I don't it? know who that was, but gosh, he fit right in. There was a youngster that brought them out. I, I figured it was one of Bravo's little he Bravos, had all but the, I'm not maybe, sure. He had everything. Uh, nice. Awesome, but but it was great. They had their own uh, 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 little mascot escort to the ring there. Yeah, yeah and it was pretty awesome. But it was supposed to be the infantry taking on. Uh, Jack Jameson and Jimmy Wild. Well, we found out uh, when those guys made their way to the ring, it was Jack Jameson uh, bringing out Jimmy Wild and Nikki Eight. Uh, Nikki Eight, of course, half of the superstars who we've called plenty of times before uh, mm-hmm. in uh, TCW. Mm-hmm. Now, Jack Jameson would get on the microphone and let everybody know that he injured himself uh, while training. And so Nikki Eight would be taking his place, and so it turned out to be. What was he squatting six hundred pounds and must have a quad or something? Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> he, he let us know it was something uh, outlandish, but it was uh, uh, nothing to do with Ziggy Dice, mind you. But it was just, yeah. yeah, it was something ridiculous, I should say. Uh, so, anyways, he was in the corner of Jimmy Wild and Nikki Eight, who uh, you talk about Nightmare Factory. We talked about that earlier. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking about a ring full of Nightmare Factory guys. You know, mm-hmm. Jack Absolutely. Jameson's been there since I think he was there when it was the One Fall Power Factory. Sean wow. Dean was around when it was the One Fall Power Factory. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it turned, when Cody came along and it became the Nightmare Factory, that's where you see Carly Bravo part of that first yeah. class. Uh, yeah. And later classes, you see Jimmy Wild, you see mm-hmm. Nikki Eight. And, um, you know, we've talked about this before, GB calling some of these Nightmare Factory shows. Uh, or TCW shows when you have like the uh, it's almost like the senior class coming back in mm-hmm. taking on the freshman class that's and uh, that's kind of what it was and uh, but I will tell you what you know everybody especially in the Southern Honor building at the action building with the Southern Honor fans firmly behind the infantry expected Absolutely. the infantry to go in there and take care of business and we knew they would and they did however yeah. I would tell you Jimmy Wilde and Nikki 8 put up one heck of a fight exactly. I think that surprised a lot of people um, and so, of course, I neglected to say, but obviously with it being the SHW champions, this other team was repping TCW. Now, with the infantry winning that match, successfully retaining those titles, it put us a three to two uh, still advantage TCW. But man, oh, man, what a fun that uh, match that was, Diana. And I'll let you and GB now it will make sense what we were alluding to earlier. Diana, I'll let you talk about what happened after the matchup. Oh, well, after the matchup, you know, I mean, we got celebrations going on. Everything's good in Warden and Lev. Well, Lev specifically came out, interrupted the celebration. Yes. Lev came out. What did he have? He had something in his hand and he cracked them, cracked some one of them over the head. I can't remember which one. Um, yeah. What did he have in his hand? He came and attacked one of them. I'm trying to remember too, but I just know he attacked them during the celebration. He attacked them during the celebration. And Warden comes out to Which save we the thought day. Was gonna, yeah, to save the day. And he attacks them. So, so here's the thing, Lev- GB. Not only that, he, he saves the day, runs off Lev. Lev's yes. out by the crowd. Warden raises the hand of the infantry like this. And then boom, turns on him. Just like yeah, that. Just like Le- that. Lev jumps back in. They're jumping the infantry. And it turns out so they're together. Lev, Back the rule together. was he could no longer say they are faithful. Instead, he says, I'm Alexander Lev. This is a warden and we are family. family. So I guess he found a little, uh, Another a, loophole. a little loophole. A loophole. And yeah, he, uh, they are now family. And of course, we'll get to it in a second because that matchup has been announced for next Friday, SHW 68 for the tag team titles. It's going to be Carly and Sean versus Lev and Warden. We'll talk about that here uh, once we get through talking about this show. But it was just kind of, it shocked everybody because like I said, earlier in the night, the fans had, had you know, they were firmly behind the Warden and the Warden yeah. had won the fans over. And all of a sudden, now he's back to the same old Warden, back with Lev. And uh, we should, I, sh- I just should have seen it coming. Mm-hmm. I can't believe was- I didn't see it coming. It was not a sister sledge feeling moment. It was not that kind of we are family. It was more of a oh my god. It was just I yeah. I was of course I was speechless, but I couldn't even utter a sound at that. It was just like not fun. I was shocked and disappointed. I was like, you hadn't even been a good guy for like thirty minutes. Come on, right? Exactly. <laughs> Such a dark, dark dude. Yeah. Oh well. So just your thoughts on that, just hearing that, GB, what, what is what is your takeaway from that? Well, the first thing that came to mind was dream girls. We are a family. <laughs> See, like I a went, giant I tree. <laughs> yeah, like a giant tree. And uh, Warden <laughs> is a giant tree. True that. And um, I think I know, even called him that during the match at one point because <laughs> Lev was chopping down the legs. And I said he's chopping yeah, down the tree. Yeah, a giant tree. Lev, you know, when he left uh, still here, he said he was lost. And, uh, you know, I've heard it said that the lonely are placed in families and uh, he likes a family. And so found a loophole. He couldn't be faithful, but he could have a family. This is very, very interesting. And it makes one. Yeah. Well, you talk about them saying he was lost. That was one. One other thing he said is they grabbed those. SHW title belts and said, I might've been lost, but now I found what we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, Oh, uh, you gotta be kidding me. So. I don't know. Well, how well, well. Yeah. Lev's family. Hmm. Okay. But 
back to what Diana was saying about Grayson Pierce, what does that mean for him? Is he <clears throat> still part of that equation? Hopefully not because he, like I said, he was shining on his own in See, that what? singles match. So hopefully, you know. He, he got just... a bunch of L's when he was with the faithful. Yeah. So. We'll see where it goes. Time wow. will tell. But uh, and of course, like I said, there's a big matchup next week coming off of that, and we'll touch on that here in a few minutes. But moving on down the line here, uh, the next thing that happened was not even announced, was not even supposed to be on the card, but we had an impromptu matchup. And the way this started, so we knew Buff Bagwell, WCW legend, was going to be in the house doing a meet and greet, autograph signing, taking pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, he makes his way out to the ring, greets the crowd. Thanks the crowd for coming, you know, puts over the, uh, the, the benefit show for the Shriners, uh, for the children's hospital. And while he's in the middle of a very special heartfelt uh, moment, here comes Rosario Grillo, uh, uninvited, didn't even know he was in the building and gets in bus face, you know, tries to one up, tries to show up, buff the stuff bag. Well, and actually challenges buff to a match right then and there. So Buff says, all right, get a referee down here right now. Referee comes out. We're all thinking, wait a second, is Buff going to take him up on this challenge here? And he goes, I just want the referee down here, not for a match, just so he can pull me off, off of you when I start beating on you. <laughs> and then he says, I tell you what, I got somebody you can have a match with, somebody who is Scott Hall approved, somebody who is Kevin Nash approved, somebody who is NWO approved. And when you're NWO, you're NWO for life. And then you get a, a remix of Sunny Days' music with a little mm -hmm. NWO flavor on it. And mm. out comes Sunny Days wearing the SHW NWO looking shirt. It's the SHW logo or NWO logo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, very cool. Uh, he comes down, hits the two sweet with Buff, and then has an impromptu match with Rosario Grillo. And I guarantee you, two seconds into this matchup, Grillo was immediately regretting his decision mm -hmm. to have come out to the ring because Sunny Days uh, just whooped up on two Rosario Grillo. Two seconds into the intro music, he was regretting it. Yeah, yeah. We're and started. not only that, there was a couple of times throughout the match where, uh, where Sonny was very obviously honoring his late great friend, the hall of famer, the legendary Scott Hall. Uh, in fact, by the end of the match, he hits a beautiful razor's edge on Rosario Grillo. He gets the win and uh, ties it up for SHW three to three. Cause he had Grillo representing TCW Sonny, of course, representing SHW Sonny mm -hmm. being the SHW original, which we talked about at still here six. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it was awesome. And then to see uh buff in there, with the two sweet and the celebration. Yeah. And then Grillo tries to interrupt the celebration. Sonny uh, lays him out and then buff gets a shot at him as well. And so that was very cool. And uh, Diana, how neat was that to see buff? I mean, we've had buff at I our shows before. Uh, you know, we had him, I think still here, what, two years ago, maybe. And, um, but to have him back and uh, just the crowd was eating it up. He even came by the uh, commentary booth, hit a two sweet over there with me. I was like, this is cool. This is cool. And uh, I'll even, I'll even toot my own horn here a second because it was just such a geek out moment for me. Uh, and I, I think I've shown you guys the video. It's from like 1999 or 2000. It was a, a, a radio station celebrity softball game. And we're talking about these WCW wrestlers were at like the height of their, of the, monday nitro popularity right and so like ernest the cat miller was there buff bagwell was there goldberg was there and so you got skinny puny little b-dub doing little interviews on the field with these guys and uh and, and fast forward you know what 24 years later and here we are i'm too sweet and buff bagwell at a southern honor show <laughs> so very cool kind of full circle moment for me but uh what do you think diana uh, it's always a party when buff's in the house yeah. always he, he's just so warm and nice and it just he was standing outside uh well behind the the first row um during the qt uh kyle match and and he was loving it god yeah. he was so into it just watching you know Actually, all the hits and moves since, since you brought that up there was a point where yeah he was watching from the crowd and qt spotted him watching so and qt starts doing the buff uh, mannerisms <laughs> in his match it was so good <laughs> yeah it yeah, was yeah. so good yeah every yeah. every time he's around it, it's always a party so i don't know what Grillo's deal is it seems like every time I see him at a show he has to interrupt somebody and try to start some kind of crap but 
Maybe one day he'll learn. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. 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 Oh, that sounds amazing. Good grief. I can't wait to watch this. This no, is so I can't good. wait for you to this see it. So, so much good. Fun. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I forgot to mention as well that uh <clears throat> at some point during that time, before Sonny ever came out, Sal being Sal just wandered off. I don't Ooh. know where he wandered to. He's Sal Renaro. You can guess, you know, where he might have gone. Ooh, I don't nice. know. Um, but I thought about it after the fact, and I thought, you know what? I don't know if that was some sort of divine intervention there because it was probably for the best that he wandered off before Sonny got down there because that could have been a very explosive situation yeah. because we haven't seen those two uh, near each other since, what, nearly a year ago when we yeah. saw seemingly what, what what seemed like the split up of Happy mm -hmm. Madness. So mm -hmm. who knows if, if we'll ever see that story pick back up. I don't mm -hmm. know between those two guys. But uh, yeah, Sal had wandered off at that point, and it was probably for the best. Mm -hmm. But uh, wow. Uh, and on that note, moving on down the card, I was joined by uh, the Don of commentary, Don Miguel, who is the lead commentator for DWA, Dynamic Wrestling Association. Uh, and if that sounds familiar, that's because the DWA Ultra Violent Championship was on the line in our main event. But before we got to that match, we had the Southern Honor Championship match, which was Joe Black defending against the Ukrainian-born thriller Elijah Drago, the powerhouse of Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, uh, one of the most intimidating wrestlers you're ever going to see. Uh, and man, oh man, what an opponent for Joe Black. Now, Joe had actually already defended the title once, and it was at Forever Pro a week prior against mm. his uh, hierarchy running mate, uh, the Kenway, and he was successful in that title defense. Coincidentally, Don Miguel was at that show and called that match, and so he joined me to call this title match, and it was Joe's first title defense inside <clears throat> the action building in SHW's own backyard, and so, of course, the crowd, very excited to see Joe defend that title, uh, and the thing about Drago, we've seen him before, uh, GB, we saw him at that first uh, relaunch show. Diana, mm -hmm. we've seen him on the relaunch tour over the last several months. He just has a way about him that makes him very unlikable to the live audience. <laughs> He'll As soon as he gets to the ring, he grabs the mic, he starts speaking U Ukrainian, and I don't know what he's saying, but he's saying it with a very angry look on his face. And we were joking off mic, off air, that, oh, well, maybe he's saying nice things. We don't know. I don't understand what he's saying. I said, well, if he is, he, he sure has a weird, a weird way of saying it because he looks very angry. He and, could be uh, saying, thank you for coming out. We love you. He Something might be. I don't know. He might know. be. There are some people who, who don't know how to uh, compliment with their face. Right. <laughs> and it's so, just a lot of effort coming out. Yeah, it's just, I love you. You're amazing. I can't stand. Yeah. It, you know, it, yeah. I mean, and that could be the case. So I, I can't say one way or the other. Cause again, I don't speak the language, so I don't know. Um, but the crowd does not like it. The crowd immediately starts booing them. And, uh, it, but I will tell you what, what an opponent for Joe black, because you got two guys. I mean, just chiseled out of granite, both yes. of these guys, mm. uh, really the only advantage there was, uh, you know, a uh, Drago has the height advantage in the, in the, the arm, you know, the spin and all that stuff. So he's got the reach advantage. Uh, but that wasn't anything to deter Joe Black. I mean, it's it's Joe Black. Come on. Yeah. And um, but while Drago did put up a good fight, he did. And remember, going into this, we were tied three to three, mm -hmm. and this was the final match that was SHW versus TCW of the night. Mm -hmm. Joe Black retains his title, SHW four to three overall on the evening. And uh what a great match it was. It was a great match. What was interesting, Diana, and now GB, I think you've seen this video because it has since been posted online. A video was sent to us that aired that night <clears throat> from uh, Jackson Drake calling mm -hmm. out Joe Black, which has set up a title match for next Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we saw Jackson Drake. It was at the um, it was at the Rumble Jack. He made an appearance. Mm -hmm. And then the following show, he made an appearance. Do you remember who, who did he fight at the following show? What I do remember about that specifically was Joe, 
Joe Black. It must have been somebody oh, it was Kenway. from the hierarchy. It was Kenway. It was Kenway. It was Kenway. Yeah, that's because right. Joe Black was specifically that's right watching Jackson Drake, mm -hmm. and when that match was over. Jackson Drake is on the ground and uh, he is talking to Jackson Drake in a we very said. kind. Yes. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's history between those two. And so the fact that there's going to be a match between them. Ooh. Yeah. Get ready. But I will say this for Elijah uh, Drago, who definitely is intimidating, yeah. but uh, no one's more intimidating than Joe Black. No. You're not. And uh, Drago uh, obviously has only been in the business for a small time. Um, Joe Black has forgotten more than Elijah remembers. And so I think with that, there was a great lesson taught uh, mm -hmm. to Elijah Drake that uh, Drago, Drago, excuse yeah. me. It's Drago and Drake. And, I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, for Drago, there was a lesson taught to him that I'm sure he will never, ever forget and that lesson is you always bet on black always <laughs> well and the thing too about drago and again it was hard all night long to try to remain unbiased between these two promotions because we call matches for both shows mm -hmm. you know for mm -hmm. uh, both promotions um but drago is one of these like a sponge he's gonna soak up every little bit of every little match and even if he doesn't win he's gonna learn He's going to, yes. now you mentioned he's going to learn always bet on black, but just mm -hmm. in general, going to learn yeah. what can I do better next time? For Here's sure. where I made a mistake here. I'm going to learn from this and next time I'm going to do it better. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you all the pedigree in the world to be become a huge star in this business oh, yes. as do pretty much everybody on this card. I mean, if I'm being honest, like this entire card was just stacked top to bottom, mm -hmm. but Joe black retaining SHW four TCW three. And that brings us to the main event of the evening. As if two promotions in one building wasn't enough, let's bring in a third promotion: DWA Ultra Violent Title on the line. The champion, the legendary War Machine, Man Beast. Uh, the very next night, TNA Hall of Famer. <laughs> We're talking about Rhino, and he was taking on SHW Zone, homegrown from camera guy to deathmatch uh, crazy <laughs> wrestler. Uh, the kill Billy, Nathan Mowry and man, oh man, what an insane match this was. It was hardcore rules. Anything goes. These guys went all over the building and I mean, mm -hmm. all over the building. What a pin match. Yeah. Pinfall submission had to happen inside the ring. And I wondered, are they ever going to make it back to the ring? Right. Uh, eventually they did, but man, oh man, Diana. I think I saw like three trash cans get emptied and blown across the room. Like 20 uh, yards across the room. Just yeah, I mean, well, eaved. poor Cheyenne, she had her Starbucks. You know, Rhino <laughs> grabbed her Starbucks and cracked it over. <laughs> nothing no, said, nothing, and nobody was safe, yeah. I mean, nothing was. She was like, that was my drink, you know? I'm like, welcome to the commentary. Welcome yeah, to our table. It is. That's what this happens. This is how it is. Uh, but but no, know, was, no respect, you know, no respect none, to this commentary booth. No, whatsoever. You just have to hold on to it if you want to keep it. Yep. Half the time you lose your table. We were lucky to keep our table, so we were good. There it is. But it was very entertaining. The the whole match was very entertaining. It was all over the place. It was hard to keep up with. But it was it was just it was just a fun, cringy kind of you know how <laughs> hardcore matches. It's just one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to happen? Yeah. Uh, I think he had mouth. Uh, and I think came out with mouse traps. Tap tape to the bat this so time i was so... mistaken you even hear me on comments uh terry at first when he first comes out i say something about oh nathan's got the barbed wire bat uh yeah. don actually uh, corrected me he goes i hate to correct you but that's actually a bat covered in mouse traps. mouse traps and i said well you know what we've had like uh we've had flaming bats we've had exploding bats i was waiting uh, on the exploding bats, bar, barbed he, wire bats so I, it gets so, creative with every yeah. time he comes out there's something new the, it was doors yeah bombshell uh, was with him she had the uh, singapore cane with her she did and so it, she was so she took the chain mail because he was interfering. That was amazing. That was awesome. We got to see chain mail get his tail whooped he by a bombshell. With that thing, yeah. Oh my. Yeah. That so okay. I forgot to mention, he grabs a mic before the match started and just really giving it to the SHW fans and mm. uh, talking about how, you know, they were going to take all the charity money and, <clears throat> and blah, 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 blah. The children you could know. fight him for it. Really. Yeah. It was just chain mail being chain mail. So it was very nice to see bombshell get a few licks in with that, with that cane. But, mm -hmm. um, man, I tell you what, it was the biggest opportunity of Nathan Mowry's uh, very young career, and he succeeded, and he defeated just an absolute legend. 
and uh, for the DWA Ultra Violent Championship. Wow. A very familiar sight. He went up top, lit the elbow on fire, dropped it right to the heart of Rhino. And, oh, not to mention prior to that, Nathan kicked out of a gore, gore, gore. <laughs> wow. Unreal. Unreal. Wow. And I believe there was an interview somewhere because I think Don uh, Miguel referenced it where uh, <laughs> Rhino said, like, if they kicked out of it, it's not a gore, it's a spear. Because nobody kicks out of a gore. <laughs> well, that night, Nathan Mowry, the killbilly, kicked out of a gore. And then wow. uh, Rhino set up a door in the corner to go for the gore again. This time, Mowry moves. You got to gore through a door. And then uh, the elbow, flaming elbow drop on top of that. Woo! I mean, it was nuts. I can't wait to go back and watch this one. And uh, it, it was just insane. So hats off to Nathan Mowry, the killbilly, his very first championship. Wow. And, I mean, talk about. You can't beat a bigger, uh, it can't be a bigger match because you're beating somebody the caliber of Rhino. I mean, right. that was what a special night and what a special moment. And then the respect of Rhino at the end, shaking his hand and, and you know, presenting him the title. Like it was, it was so It cool. was also up front in, in the beginning of the show, signing autographs and, and, you know, doing his thing. So that was two big stars in the house to do that, which is great. Great. Yeah. It was a wonderful night. Just just an amazing show. And I, and again, I just want to thank all of the fans for coming out because, again, it was a, a benefit show. Uh, everybody that worked the show worked it for free. All proceeds that came in the door went straight to the uh, Cherokee Shrine Club uh, and in turn from there went to the Shriners uh, Children's Hospital. So mm -hmm. very great night. We even did like a 50-50 raffle uh, where half the proceeds went to the Shriners. And then the person who won actually ended up donating their half to the Shriners as well. Yeah. So. This very Jeff Rittman. oh yeah jeff Rittman. yeah absolutely oh, so it's very cool and uh man just just what a what a neat show and uh a very cool show and again gb we missed you we did. Uh, big yeah. time but you know what yeah. we got a big show next friday and we're yes. all gonna be back in the house yeah yes I can't indeed wait. we will um I, i'll just say this congratulations again to uh nathan uh becoming the new champion and what a perfect title for him. The ultra violent championship. Yes, like it. Absolutely. Man, so I mean, fitting. So just, fitting. Just call it the Nathan Mowry championship right. at this point because <laughs> the kill Billy championship fits him. But you know, the irony of the fact that the very next night Rhino was inducted into the uh, TNA hall of fame yeah. speaks volumes that the last match before Rhino goes into the hall of fame is forever going to be against Nathan Mowry mm -hmm. in our building. Yeah. And Nathan won. That's, That's awesome. incredible. That That's is just wild. absolutely incredible. So Nathan can say he has defeated a Hall of Famer. And yeah. uh, that's a big deal, a very, very big deal. So again, congratulations to Nathan. Thank you to everyone who showed up, who bought a ticket, who who did whatever it is that you did to help make this night such a rousing success. And now come prepare because, you know, we've told you before, Sometimes we're once a month. We had a situation, um, I think it was March, where we were twice in a month, and then we had nothing in April, so you had to wait for a while, and then it was May. But now you're getting three shows in four weeks. You say you wanted it. You got it. So be with us next Friday. Yeah. I kind of yeah. like this, actually. Yeah, I, too. I mean, you know, I we, we kind of want to be in that business where we're seeing things on a more regular basis anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, show up for us, fans. And uh, we look forward to it. It's SHW 68. That's next Friday. Unbelievable. Yeah, I can't wait. And uh, and real quick, again, I know we normally do like a full-on preview show the week before, but because we're doing a recap show of last week, we'll just yeah. give you the rundown of the card. And then next Friday, join us live with the mm -hmm. pre-show yes. as we'll be live at the Action Building from 7 to 7.30. And we'll mm -hmm. give you a more in-depth preview. But just to give you a quick rundown of the card, for next Friday, it's SHW 68 uh, live from the Action Building. We're going to see Nick Halen taking on the returning Aaron Dallas. Mm -hmm. That's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Nick Halen, he's coming off of a grueling match against his uh, in-game uh, brethren, CT Keys, who won that match. It's still here six to become the mm -hmm. JTS uh, legacy number one contender. So it'll be CT Keys taking on Kyle Matthews in Ooh. a very highly anticipated matchup. That's gonna be good. I'm gonna call that wait. one. That's gonna be that's oh. gonna be if not the match of night, very close. Yeah, that's gonna be I good. I cannot wait. Um, we had a a situation before 
the triple threat tag team championship match at still here where prior to the match, we see Kenway had been jumped backstage all bloodied and beaten up. We didn't know quite what happened during the match. At one point, uh, murder one gets the glove off of Xander Seabolt sees blood all over his hand. We think maybe it was, it was Kenway turns out our medical team was able to talk to Kenway after the match. He confirmed it was the grapplers and more specifically Seabolt that attacked him. And so mm -hmm. we will now see Kenway trying to exact a measure of revenge on Seabolt as they go one-on-one -on -one next Friday. So that's going to be a good one. Um, we've got, let's see. Oh, GB, I know you saw this. It was announced yesterday, as a matter of fact. This one's going to be awesome. Owen Knight, the working team captain, making his mm -hmm. way back mm -hmm. uh, as he helped out. He helped defend the honor of SHW at Still Here 6 as mm -hmm. he joined Team SHW and mm -hmm. now taking on one of the brightest stars in Georgia, the superstar, Jay Lucas, who's been mm -hmm. all over the country collecting titles, main eventing, and now this one is going to be a sleeper match for maybe match of the night. I know we just talked about CT and Kyle, but this one right here, Owen Knight, Jay Lucas, man, good. oh man. Jay Lucas, how about this? Finally making his SHW debut. Finally. It's going to be Finally. good. Finally. That was going to be awesome. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, of course, this one set up at Still Here 6. When we saw this matchup between Gary Lamb, and Zach Mosley, we thought, okay, it's finally coming to a head. It's going to put a button on this whole feud that's been going on for like three years at this point. But no, Gary Lamb gets disqualified, uses the steel chair, hits Mosley in the head with it. And then later in the night, Pepperbottom calls out uh, or comes out, calls Gary back out. Then Gary says, you know what? I'm sick of it. We're going to finally end this once and for all. Next month, SHW 68, November 8th, in the action building. It's going to be a Canton Street fight. It's going to be Mosley and Pepperbottom versus Gary Lamb and Gunnar Miller. Now, Gunnar Miller was out of action last month because he'd been hit in the head with a like a cinder block or a brick, whatever it was, and it was just unreal. And so he'll finally be cleared to wrestle and be back in action. Well, you know what? I say wrestle. I don't know if there'll be a lot of wrestling in this match. It's going to be a straight-up brawl. It's Street going to be fight. a Canton Street fight. So you're I not going to want to miss that. I see jeans and boots and chains and cut off t-shirts and bandanas and and wrist wraps and and like and a bunkhouse violence. bra. I'm thinking I'm feeling it's going to yeah. be crazy. It's it's going to be wild and uh, yeah, you're not going to want to miss it. Gary Lamb in action one more time. I didn't even, who thought we'd see him two shows in a row here <laughs> live in the ring. This has been the biggest wrestling year of his career. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, okay. And then, of course, we got, um, and I mentioned one title match earlier with the JTS Legacy title. Two more big title matches. One uh, being the SHW Tag Team titles, the Infantry. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, it was set up last week at the Fight for the Children show. And it'll be the Infantry taking on Alexander Lev and the Warden. The family, I guess, is what we're calling them now. I guess we'll get a little clarification on that at, at the next show. But, uh, yeah, I guess he'll know. He can't say I'm faithful. The music won't say it anymore. It'll be we're family. I don't know. We'll find out. And, and then another uh, match that was set up at last week's show, as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the video sent in by Jackson Drake calling out Joe Black, uh, coming after not just Joe Black, but also the SHW title. Here's the thing. He's calling out Joe Black. And Joe Black was really the one that immediately wasted no time going to Jake the Snake Roberts and saying, I want that kid one-on-one, -on -one, put my title on the line, I don't care. And so there we go. Because people are going to sit there and go, "What? Where's if this guy gets a title shot? Like, how'd that happen? No. He called out Joe Black. Joe Black said, I want this guy bad enough that I'll put my title on the line. It doesn't yeah. matter. Jake the Snake said, you got it. He's the matchmaker. And by what the way. What got me was he said something like, what was it? Um. He didn't need some friendship beads to be oh, whatever. Yeah he, I was, mm. yeah, he talked about it, the, the beads that Joe Black gives out to certain uh you know, certain guys. And and so yeah, as soon as he said that, I was like, Oh boy. Oh man. Easy, easy. Yeah, big fella. I'm like, boy, <laughs> hold on. Do you even know? Mm -mm -mm. I don't think so, you know. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. They do go back. They do have a history. Yeah, I don't so think he really. I think he knows. I think he forgot. No, I think he knows what buttons to push. To push. Correct. And push. So, so I think that's what he's he's pushing the buttons to get in Joe Black's head or to throw him off his game or something. I'm not saying that's going to work. I don't think it will work. Uh, but we'll see what happens with Jackson Drake. I know that Jackson Drake, he's he's been there twice. We saw him briefly in the Rumble Jack. 
We saw him have a great match against Kenway. He's got all the potential in the world. Very talented. Uh, great athlete. But you're stepping in there with the killer weight. You're stepping in there with Joe Black, the two-time SHW champion. Oh, boy. You got your work cut out for you. And, uh, boy, I hope you're ready. I hope you eat your Wheaties that morning because uh, you're going to need them. But uh, that's our card, SHW 68. How are we feeling, guys? How are we feeling about that? I'm excited. I'm excited. This is going to be a fun night. It's going to be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm also great. excited to be able to talk and, and do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> right. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm ready. Can we so get there? So you know what that means. <laughs> we can get feisty. Diana in the <laughs> building. Oh, uh, yeah. We got things to do. <laughs> can I just say, can I just say, though, real quick, that this whole year, I mean, we're in our November show. We're going to have one more uh, show, at least to my knowledge, just one more show in December before <clears> the end <throat> of the year. But, hey, stranger things have happened. Stranger I think that's things. the case. So let's just say we've got, like, two more shows to go this year. This year, if it's up to me, Jake the Snake Roberts is matchmaker of the year. Yes, If sir. I'm giving the awards. Because, man, oh, man, what a job he has done that's this right. entire year, every show. Yeah. You always want and we've said it in the past six years. How are they going to top them? How are they going to top yeah. themselves the next show? And yeah. somehow it's better. It, always, it just gets better and better. Yeah. So hats off to uh, Jake the Snake Roberts, man. He's done a heck of a job and can't wait to see him when he returns. I know he's going to be returning sometime soon. Don't have a firm date on that, but I can't wait to see him when he comes back. And I can't wait to see you guys in person. I can't wait to see the SHW Faithful next Friday for SHW 68. It's going to be incredible. 261 Married a Road, Canton, Georgia. Uh, tickets go on sale at the door, 5 p.m. Doors open at 7, bell time at 8. And you can watch us live on Facebook from 7 to 7.30 with the official pre-show. So before we leave them, guys, any final words? Enjoy your week because it's going to be a heck of a weekend. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be quite the week coming up next week. So I'm glad that we get to end the week off in a great way. And uh, if you enjoy us, then yeah. head over to uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash SHW pod. We've got not one but two shirts that you can grab to represent your favorite podcast. So I know you love us. Go ahead. Do it. You can get some for yourself. The season of giving is coming, so you might want to stock up early. Yeah. Grab those shirts. Grab that merch. And I'll tell you what. If you grab merch, bring it to the show. Let's take a picture. I'll sign it. Yeah. I love it. Let's do that. Let's, do, love it. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do it. that. Hey, real quick, before I go, while we're doing a couple of quick plugs, hey, uh, I don't know if you ever heard us talking about this over the last couple of years, but there's a big movie that just dropped and it's uh, being released. It got released today, as a matter of fact, on yes. all streaming services, Amazon Prime, Apple Plus, all the big uh, streaming services. And you can buy it. It's called The Unbreakable Bunch. It's starring mm -hmm. uh, the legendary Ray Lloyd, a.k.a. Glacier, Ernest mm -hmm. the Cat Miller, uh, Larry mm -hmm. Zabisco's in it, Diamond Dallas Page is in it, a uh, plethora of others. Uh, Haku. Stan Haku. Stan, Stan Hansen. Hansen. Uh, and you might hear a couple of familiar voices calling Thank some you. of the wrestling action in the movie. It's pro wrestlers versus mm -hmm. aliens in an epic clash. It's going to be absolutely insane. Uh, it's it's going to be fun for the whole family. Uh, that'll give you something to do this weekend. Go ahead and yeah. rent it or buy it. Uh, get the popcorn, get the whole family, and uh, check it out. And let us know when, when you see us next Friday. Let us know what you think of it. I can't yeah. wait to watch it because I hadn't watched it yet. So I'm going to watch it right yeah. after this show gets over. I want to watch it. And uh, it's going to be great. So um, you can get more info on, on my Facebook. I've been sharing some of the stuff. So you'll see all mm -hmm. the info right there. But uh, the Unbreakable Bunch. Uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. So it's been a labor of love for our buddies Glacier <laughs> and uh, Luther and the cat because yeah. the pandemic hit. It postponed it. It's been a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. But man, oh, man, we've been excited for this to come out. So it's finally here, guys. Can't wait. Uh, but hey, we will see you next Friday. And until then, this has been SHW. This is our wrestling. Bye.